And hello. Hello, Chips. Hello, Chim Chams. Welcome. I uh, am in the woods right now, currently. I am away from home. I am on the run because uh, police found evidence of cannibalism in my L.A. home that I sold in 2013. So I'm on the road. And yeah, so today I thought it would be a good opportunity because I'm hiding in the woods to do a questions and answers session, chat with y'all. I'm going to be looking at some questions that are, are being pinned by my wonderful mods on the Discord questions for Miles session. Nat Natty Twombly with another beautiful tip. Natty Twombly says, hello, Miles. Thank you for your awesome job in the quarry. I can't stop drawing Ryland together. What did you think of the finished game? I am very fond of the finished game. I think it's fucking awesome. I mean, I, I, I definitely knew going into it that it was something that I would want to play regardless of if I was in it or not. So yeah, being able to be a part of it and inject a little bit of my love and, and appreciation for this kind of a project into it was, was a real treat. And I'll say that, I mean, I, I really tried my best to avoid knowing anything that I could avoid knowing about the game. Like I knew obviously my parts and what could happen to me, but I tried to stay ignorant of what was happening to Jacob and Emma in the woods. I was trying to stay ignorant to a lot of the stuff so that I could play it like you do. It, it, it worked out pretty well. I played with Jacob in my first playthrough when I was playing with a bunch of friends. It was really tense because I didn't know what you had to do to save Jacob, you know, and so I could actually I could game, you know, I could really game. Am I into Arca's music? I like Arca, yeah. I've never gotten a chance to see Arca, unfortunately, which I feel like would be a very important thing to do. I feel like live Arca is probably something else. What other acting projects of yourself you recommend for you to check out? Well, there's a movie called Daniel Isn't Real that I it had a lot to do. I, that was the first time I've starred in a movie and it was definitely Really a challenge, and really exciting to do that. Leo GBT, the top three favorite cat breeds. And I'll say that my top three favorite cat breeds are orange, blue, and naked. Those are my favorite cats. I have an orange and a blue one. One day I would love to have a naked one. What breed is Tony? That's my dog Tony. If you, if you catch up with the Tony lore, that's my dog Tony is a family movie about dogs, best friendship, and uh, capitalism. We use CGI so we can, we can adjust it for the markets. Tony is whatever breed he needs to be in a specific market for us to make the most money. If you're in America, you're going to be seeing like a Golden Retriever Tony. If you're in Japan, you're going to be seeing a Shiba Inu. If you're in Croatia, it may be like a Pomeranian. That's just because the way that it works is that we're, we're making art by committee. We, we are making art for profit, and that's what art is for, you know? So That's My Dog Tony is really just about adjusting the breed or the wardrobe or any of it. You'll notice in Tony 2, I was wearing CGI dots on my face and my body and everything, and that was so that we could adjust it, the outfit, for whatever market. We wanted Peppermill to be a cool guy that was relatable. And yeah, don't worry, Tony 3 is on the way. Tony, I can't, I, I've signed an NDA and I can't say anything about Tony 3 yet, but Tony 3 is gonna happen. It's, it's, it's gonna happen, don't worry about it. Favorite slasher movie would pr uh, probably have to be Halloween, the original. Slasher nerd, just subscribe, great timing. Um, yeah, I think the original Halloween, I think kind of is the thing that a lot of films draw from final girl is it's kind of comes from that and um it was just very simple that movie and and very well executed especially for the time i was uh very fond of that one and then when i got to be a little part in the halloween reboot i was uh pretty excited to say the least wish i could have you could have seen me get stabbed through the neck spoilers at least i i got to meet my uh, prosthetic. They, they made a whole other body 
you know, they made a guy. And that was pretty cool, getting to meet my dead body. I remember them being like, you know, this, this could be, just want to warn you before you meet your dead body that this could be kind of a traumatic experience. It could be philosophically challenging. It could be the kind of thing that could really upset you to see yourself like this. Um, but I was, you know, I was just doing like a peace sign over his head. I was getting, you know, doing a photo shoot and it was real fun. Frog Farmer says is their way to get Pow Pow merch. Love you. I love you too, Frog Farmer. And I can't wait for you to get some. We haven't printed Pow Pow merch in a long time. We are currently working on figuring out who we want to release our next record with. And when we get that going, I'm sure we're going to set up a merch shop. I see a question from Jay Parr. How often do you plan on streaming now? If at all, did you think your streams would have took off as much as, as it did? I have always been interested by Twitch. I didn't really get it too much before the quarry came out and I started watching other people playing the quarry and seeing how fun that was for people to interact with their community and take polls and do all that kind of stuff. It, it dawned on me that this is kind of way better than public access television. Everyone in this world, especially in the internet era, is feeling very alienated from each other. I see something kind of tragic, of course, in the way that our urban design has made us alienated from each other, but there's also something really beautiful and amazing about how these kinds of online communities expand your community way beyond what you could have been capable of in physical spaces. And so to see, you know, people from all around the world on here being in touch with each other and finding friendships and, and sharing some laughs and all that, like, and I'm kind of still wrapping my head around being a Twitch streamer, but um, I definitely plan to do it uh, for I, the foreseeable future. Um, I think that I will probably reliably be able to do like a once a week thing. And like right now I'm on vacation. I mean, I'm hiding in the woods from the police, but I'm away from my console and I find a way to do something to connect with you all and have a nice time today. So, and yeah, passion, that's, that's a great point, especially for marginalized groups. The escapism is so crucial and Twitch is beautiful for that. That's really, it is. And I love that people find a space here that is, a safe and comfortable space where you can move beyond uh, the constraints of the physical space that you occupy. Merit says, do you love to cook? And if so, what's your favorite meal to make? Um, I am allergic to nuts. So I learned how to cook mostly by baking. I was got really into baking when I was uh, like in my early 20s because it was the only way that I could make something tasty and know that it was safe for me to eat. So my favorite thing to make is a cheesecake. I love a cheesecake. Um, I like to serve it warm, which a lot of people would find weird, but it's nice. It's like somewhere between a cake and a pudding. Love salty sweet, love to make uh, salty cookies. The um, other thing I love to make is pasta because pasta is, is the most important food group and I am allegedly Sicilian, so somewhere in me, I need to make a pasta. What does my tattoo mean? This tattoo is a self-portrait. You can look at it if you want. It's a self-portrait, and you might see a little mushroom man, you know, like a little chef, mushroom chef, and that's acceptable, that's totally fine. But when I drew it, when I was 18, it's a monkey, those are his two closed eyes. Noah's asked, are there any musicians or actors that you would like to work with in the future? Of course. Hope to do that with both of them. I feel kind of like intimidated by trying to work with my heroes, you know? I don't think I really like deserve to work with Bill Murray, but I would love to. I would love to work with uh, Tim Heidecker, I think is, is my favorite comedian I, and, and actor. I think he's an incredible comedic actor and writer, obviously, but big fan of his. Tim Robinson, I think is awesome. Oh, uh, you know who I would love to work with is, is you, is um, the actress, Japanese actress, goes by you, one of the hosts on Terrace House, and she's also a fantastic actress. I find her so charming and funny, and her voice is amazing. She was in like all of these Koreeda films that I love, particularly the movie that is called Aruite Mo, Aruite Mo, or Still Walking in English. Oh, what musicians would I like to work with? Probably like the people I already work with. It's really nice to make music with your friends. 
Does Justice stream? I don't know. I, I'd have to, I've talked to Justice about it. I think he's interested in doing it. It's a lot of work to get it set up though. And that's what, you know, I know that Zach and Siobhan are currently doing that. And I'm really looking forward for y'all to follow them and see their playthroughs. And I think we're going to um, do something together at some point, some kind of multiplayer thing. What was your audition and or acting process different for the quarry since it was both video game and mocap? I mean, yeah, acting in the quarry was definitely very different than doing any other kind of acting I've done before. It's closer to like theater because you're not really, they can put the camera wherever. And honestly, so much of acting is just understanding camera movements and how to position your body to look good on camera. I mean, you're a prop with a little bit more going on. And so it's important when you're doing a movie to really understand camera angles and all this kind of stuff. In the video game, you don't have to do that because they can put the camera wherever they want to. So it's kind of more like theater that you're doing this thing where you're just in. It's like a big black box theater, basically. And you don't get a lot of takes. You know, we did some things we did multiple takes of, but a lot of stuff was just one and done. It was very nice um, to kind of work that way and not have to do things over and over. And then you do multiple setups and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's very, um, it's very funky to do this kind of thing where you have to act different possibilities and be able to keep things kind of in the middle enough that either way that it went, it makes sense for you to be performing that way. So, there, so that, that was a very interesting kind of thing. Because if you start doing too many branches, then it's impossible. But you have to have branches that can, that can meet back up. So you might notice that it's pretty funny if I keep my hand in the game. Spoilers. Even if I kept it, I'm not really using that throughout the rest of the game. And that was just because like, it would be too fucking impossible to shoot everything with both the hand on and off. Steve Harvey asked, how many Steve Harveys is there? And the answer is there's only one Steve Harvey. There's only one. Uncle Jiggy Stardust asks, who do you look up to the most? Is there anyone you kind of consider a personal hero or maybe your strongest influence in life? The first person that comes to mind is Arthur Russell. Arthur Russell was an amazing musician and New Yorker and artist and the reason that I look up to him so much is just that I think that he is one of the best pieces of evidence that your creative output does not need to be limited to one genre or one focus, really. He made all different kinds of music and each version, you know, whether it was dance music or it was rock music, folk music or avant-garde, it was all uniquely him, you know. I think that's a really great thing to look up to and keep with you, especially when it comes to creativity that, you know, you can't make anything better than, you know, your influences or you can't, you can't go out there trying to make something the way that it's been made before. The best thing to do is just to be the most you you can be. Finding a way to be comfortable bringing what you know and love to different spaces and not feeling limited that you're only good at one thing or whatever. Uh, I think it's just a really important thing to keep in mind when you're being creative. So, yeah, I look up to Arthur Russell. And my cat is named after Arthur Russell. His name is Arthur Russell Bingus. Passion says, what's your favorite childhood video games? When I was, I mean, very young, I, I played a lot of Mario 64 and, um, like, Super Mario Brothers on the, on the, the Super Nintendo. And I loved Mario Kart. I think when I first was like, okay, I'm this is I'm a, I'm a nerd now. I love games, and I'm gonna be obsessed with this game in a way that none of my friends or family understand. Was uh, Knights of the Old Republic? Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic was the first uh, deep RPG that was uh, really, really, really important to me. And Oblivion, I think, was the other one. Cassidy has a question. What has been your favorite project by far? I am a huge fan of The Quarry, obviously. I mean, this has been a real treat, and it was something that I've always wanted to do. In fact, after Until Dawn came out, I remembered talking to my agents about, like, if Supermassive is ever... Do, get me in that immediately. And film people honestly don't really know the video games world very well. 
and maybe didn't even, I don't know, I don't know if they took it particularly seriously or not, but I, I felt very passionately about it. And then kind of like as a side note, there's at some point I was like, oh, there's this like video game, I don't know if you'd be interested in that, Miles, but like, it was this, I was by this like company of Superman, and I was like, let's fucking go, let's do it. So I was very happy to do that. But other than that, I'd say that uh, the movie Cock Blockers that I did was very important for me. It, it changed my life. I mean, it was the thing that kind of started me on acting as a profession. And I made very good friends. And I met someone who I was in a relationship with for four years. Remains one of my best friends. I think that that was a real important project for me. Do you read manga? I do read manga. I'm a big fan of Osamu Tezuka. I really loved the Osamu Tezuka Buddha series, the Phoenix. Phoenix is that series that like goes, it's, it's like the first one is at the dawn of man and the second one is at the end of humanity. And then it starts going and meeting in the middle at present day. The first two, the one that was like dawn of man and the end of man, I thought were incredible pieces of science fiction. What's up, everyone? Chips in the chat. Here we go. We're live streaming. Miles Robbins here. Social security number 4421378. This is Miles Robbins checking in with my chips. What's going on? Do you show them? What's going on? There it is. Hey, man. Just I saw this one. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, hey, 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 everybody. Um, this is this is this hey. is my brother Jack. What's up, guys? It's, this is Jack. Jack is the, uh, you can follow Jack at Nabisco. Jack is the creative uh, director of Nabisco creative crackers. director of uh, Nabisco design. We're moving into cookie soon. Check it out. Check out your, your pharmacies for Nabisco the, crackers um, for digestion. We're going to take shit soon. We're moving to the shit game. Um, so yeah, thank you. Follow Jack at Nabisco. Do we have any questions for Jack from the chat? It's just nice to talk to people. Uh, do you like opera? Oh, if you like opera, I love opera. That's what I say to all my friends. Thanks so much, man. Okay, yeah, you're welcome, Jack. Okay. All right, thank you, everybody. This has been a really great opportunity for Jack um, to uh, say hi to people. We normally keep him locked in the basement, so this is a real treat, but don't get too comfortable, Jack. What was it like working with John Cena? He seems like a genuinely cool and nice person. Such a fan. I got a little figurine from Dollar Tree. For good luck when I play games on my Xbox. That sounds great, Gemini. Gemini. Um, love John Cena. John Cena's a great guy. Real tall and strong. And uh, very genuinely kind. Really has that movie star quality of, of knowing how to just be very, very, very kind to people that he works with. So generally, yes, very good Cena. My favorite video games, I think The Last of Us and The Last of Us Part Two are incredible achievements in storytelling and in video game making. The Last of Us Two, I thought particularly was one of the most impressive subversions of narrative the way that it involved you in the multiple characters and the multiple characters' experiences of the same events, the audience being so involved in that because it's a game, which is the beauty of games, I think delivered more profoundly than anything I've ever experienced a uh, parable about cycles of violence and the brutality of humanity and, and the tragedy of, of violence. And so I thought that I thought that was fucking amazing experience. I mean, I I really 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 loved The Last of Us too. Also, The Walking Dead Part mm -hmm. One, the Telltale Walking Dead. That was one of the first times that I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I could actually, I I I'd see why I might want to be a parent. <laughs> it, was, it was the first time I was like, oh, this is this is beautiful. I've played Journey. I really loved Journey, and I'll say that actually, the, probably one of my favorite games, kind of in that genre is the game Everything, which is the Alan Watts inspired game. It's more like an interactive art piece than a game really. Everything, um, which is on Steam and it's on PlayStation, whatever I think, for a lot of people I know was their introduction to Alan Watts, who is my favorite philosopher. So I really, uh, really recommend the game Everything. My favorite anime is Paranoia Agent was was one of my favorite animes and Neon Genesis Evangelion of course 
in film, I'd love Perfect Blue. Uh, I, I'm a huge Satoshi Kon fan, so Perfect Blue, I think, is my favorite of his. Also, um, Tokyo Godfathers, I thought was amazing and really uh, beautiful. Uh, my favorite book is a book called Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World by Haruki Murakami. It's a really good book. It's very fun at times, but also very spiritual and philosophical. It's a kind of split-brained uh, story that is both, you know, one chapter is, is a uh, kind of noir science fiction story, and then alternating chapters takes place in this mystical, uh, psychedelic dreamscape with golden furred unicorns and skulls that sing and shadows that are separated from your body and all sorts of weird, great psychedelic shit. A book that I'm currently reading called The Parable of the Sower, and it is very profound. It was written in like the 80s, but it is uh, extremely prescient in describing the kind of world that we're finding ourselves in. It's very bleak, but a but, uh, very good book. Did I always want to be an actor? Did I consider other paths in life before? I mean, this would really piss off a lot of people, but I never really wanted to be an actor. I, I like making things, and I have tried a bit of everything. In college, I was studying music production and documentary filmmaking. I was making a documentary. At some point after college, I uh, was living at home and someone broke into my mom's house and stole my laptop, my camera, all of my hard drives and everything that I've been using to make this documentary that I've been working on in college. I had been doing primarily documentaries and like installation work when I was at school. I was doing a lot of like uh, audio visual installations. And yeah, so like I, you know, was, I thought on a path to like start making art films or something. All my shit got stolen and I was like, I guess I'm not a filmmaker anymore. And then I started DJing and I started playing my record collection out and I would go out to bars and play. And so I was playing that and then, I, and then people liked that. This was like 2013, 2014 and the vinyl thing was a real novelty for some. So that kind of became my gig. I mean, I was still working at a bar, busting tables and shit. And then at a certain point, I was able to make enough money DJing to support myself. And, you know, keep in mind, I have the privilege of the fact that I was being supported by my mom. You know, I was living at home and like me being able to support myself DJing three nights a week was going hand in hand with the privilege that I already had. And, and, and once I was only working three nights a week, really, I had time to do other shit and... I went and thought, hey, maybe I, I should try acting, try to, to going out for some stuff, just, you know, as another thing to do, not really with any designs on becoming, like, a famous actor. I, again, still do not want to be famous. But I thought, like, hey, this could be fun to go, you know, maybe I'll be, like, a little part in Law & Order or something. And I started kind of reading for stuff and going up on things and then got... I hired to be a DJ on a TV show on a Mozart in the Jungle. They wanted someone who really knew what DJing was all about because they, they were really great, that show, about making sure that the musicians and all the shit was really legitimate. You know, they, they wanted to make it look right. And so they wanted to hire a real DJ to play this DJ. And then that was my first real gig. And uh, that was super, super lucky. And it turned out that I was better at it than I thought I would be. So I'm like, okay, cool. This is my favorite job I've ever had. And I'm going to work to make this my job and do the best work that I can with it. But yeah, I just kind of fell into it in this strange kind of serendipitous way. And, you know, again, I had a lot of privilege coming into it. It wasn't just so simple as I got lucky. I was already lucky. But more than that, and this is something that I think is really uh, not discussed enough, there are plenty of people with connections to the industry. Like, there's tons of people with connections to the industry. There are people who are kids of actors or producers, or people who just, ha their parent knows the producer or whatever, you know, from playing golf, whatever. People have all sorts of connections. 
and they're all competing with each other. So really, at the end of the day, that's not really what makes it happen. What makes it happen is, is, is having the time to spend going up on auditions and stuff. With this business, it's just kind of about being good enough to be in the right place at the right time. It's not, about, it's not a meritocracy. Like some people who are incredible actors don't get nearly enough work just because they, they don't have the right haircut at the right time. So what it's really about is the fact that I was, I was, uh, I was lucky enough to be supported and not have to work a nine to five job every day. And I was able to have the time to go up on auditions and throw myself at the wall and be rejected. Keep doing that until something hit, you know? So really, you know, what it kind of comes down to, I guess, is in the arts, you know, when people talk about... Really, it's just, it's just the privilege of being able to make art, practice art, try to be accepted as an artist in a system in which you're not constantly working to just keep yourself afloat. And that's just a problem with late stage capitalism. You know, we all have, so many people have fucking two jobs that they have to work and don't have any time to, to be a painter. Don't have any time to, to make music. Let's get to another question. Aisha says that you are from Kazakhstan. What's your favorite Asian film? Thank you. And you know what? This might be a way to answer another question, which I saw in the chat. New Baby says, what movie to watch during spooky season? Uh, one of my favorite movies ever is called Haosu. It is a Japanese movie about a house that eats schoolgirls. And it is really fucking funny and weird and strange and psychedelic and scary at times. But I just think it's, it's, it's a completely unique and amazing experience. It's like the history as I know it of Haosu is that Toho saw that Jaws was very successful as a blockbuster and said, okay, we need to, we need to make a big budget horror movie. So they gave this huge budget to this guy who was like a, mostly a commercial director and he just went fucking wild with it. What is a TV show that a lot of people enjoy, but you don't, I don't like cops. It's been around for a while. Don't like that. Favorite Madonna track from Passion? That's a very good question. I do love Ray of Light for sure, but I also really love Vogue, of course. Um, the uh, Tell Me Love Isn't True, it's just something that we do. I like that one a lot. I forget the name of it. Yeah, Don't Tell Me, that's the one. That's the name of the song. I have listened to Phoebe Bridgers. I love Phoebe Bridgers. I think she's great. Best camping trip I've ever been on. I went. I got to go down the Colorado River through Grand, through the Grand Canyon. That was pretty fucking amazing. As much as I have problems with the United States of America, we got some great holes in the ground and trees and stuff. You know? Am I a System of a Down fan? I was a huge fucking fan of System of a Down when that record came out with Toxicity and all that. I was a really emo little punk wannabe boy, and I really loved that record so much. Uh, what's my opinion on Mitski? I love Mitski. I think that Last Words of a Shooting Star is one of the most beautiful and sad songs I've ever heard. Mitski's Tiny Desk Concert is my favorite Tiny Desk Concert. When Mitski is, is just bare bones and communicating to you, I think that that's really special, and I really love that, uh, that Tiny Desk Concert. Do I like Radiohead? Yes, I like Radiohead. Of course I like Radiohead. It's, it's like, do you like water? You're crazy. Kind of, what kind of question? Do you like Radiohead? Do you like water? Come on. Love Lana. Don't get me wrong, I love Lana. I mean, I'm, you know, sitting here playing my video games, you know what I mean? All right, Brother Jack's here in the chat. Here comes Jack. Hi, Jack. How's it going, Jack? Oh, you need water? Can you wait a little bit, bud? Did you use your recycler already? The pee recycler? Oh, you can't pee. You don't have enough water yet. Ah, uh, fuck. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to get a new pee recycler for Jack. Um, hold on one second. One second. Yeah. One second, guys. I'm just going to... I told you to stay in the basement and don't bother me while I'm streaming. 
Okay, I have a big audience of people that are waiting to find out what kind of sea animal I like. And I don't want, I don't want to have to deal with all this shit about you needing to drink water. Oh, I don't, I don't have any water. Oh, I need to use the toilet. Well then, piss in your mouth, Jack. What do you want me to do? Hey guys, sorry, I'm back. Um, just um, had to uh, help Jack out with uh, some water. Um, I like whales a lot. I like whales, they're so big, <laughs> it's crazy. So uh, thank you so much for being here. And thanks Jack for being in the chat. You know, it's so nice to, to see you in the chat. Jack says, what's the favorite way of getting, what's your favorite way of get, to get rid of nightmares? Well, you can lock them in the basement. Chat. You can lock your nightmares away in the basement. Then you never have to look at them again. And do I have a process for getting into character, or just read script, go for it kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, I think it really depends on what kind of project. For the quarry, for something like the quarry or like Halloween, I mean, a lot of horror, I think, is if you're playing one of the victims, is about being uh, as relatable or likable or whatever. As you, you're just doing something to bring the good of you into the character so that the character is someone you don't want to see die. For the quarry, for Halloween, it was really just about making him uh, personable, enjoyable, obviously has flaws, but, at, you know, and for instance with the quarry, like Dylan's trying so hard at first, but, you know, just trying to bring enough of myself and the things that I, I think I'm comfortable with. Like the things I see in myself that would make someone not want to kill me. I just try to just bring that out. And I don't know, I, I don't think I thought too much about it other than trying to work with the words as we went and throw in stuff that I found to be funny. Oh my gosh, this is so lovely to hear, Mystic Peaches. Thank you for putting together some amazing streams. Discovering mm -hmm. you and your portrayal of Dylan Luke inspired me to start testosterone. Do you have any trans mask name racks? Sending lots of love to you mm -hmm. and my chippy fans. Wow, that's, it's so great to hear. I, don't, I definitely can't claim any responsibility for that, but I'm so proud of you for, for taking that step on your journey. I, yeah, I'm so, so, so proud of you. That's awesome. That's great to hear. It's, uh, I think the thing with the name, though, is it's, it's just got to, you've got to know it, right? Like, I don't think anyone can, can name you. It's kind of part of the fun of getting to know yourself, which is, I think, what that experience is for, for many people who, in, in claiming their identity is just getting to know yourself, right? So, but like, I don't know, Jeff, uh, uh, no, <laughs> probably not, <laughs> but um, Pringus, you can, uh, I don't know, don't let me name you. My Mario Kart main is Yoshi. I will only drive as Yoshi. Thank you, let us curse, hail Satan. Y'all heard a bark, I'm gonna get that dog, one second. That's Bowie. That's Bonino. His name is Bonino. He's got one eye that's blue and one eye that's brown, just like Bowie. And this is Jack's girlfriend's dog. Her name is Christy. She is allowed outside of the basement and she takes care of Bowie. Um, this is a good dog. So everyone, everyone, let's see some uh, chips in the chat for Bowie. Let's see uh, who likes Bowie, he wants to go. He's, he's sick of this. I'm just holding him up like this. This is how he's, he's fine with it though. He's just a little uncomfortable. Okay, bye boy. <clears throat> I just wanted to, let's see, let's, can we make a little, a new poll? And the poll is, should I allow Jack out of his hole? All right, they say, everyone said stay in the hole, Jack. I'm sorry. Um, hold on one second, I'll be right back. Hey guys, sorry about that. This is um How did you how did you get out? How did you get out What's of What's up there? everyone? It's so bright up here. I whittled this out of wood. 
I whittled this out of wood for you, Miles, and I would love to give it to you in your stream because you are an inspiration. Yeah. You are an inspiration. Yeah, I'm really, thank you so much for this. Look, I whittled it out of wood. That's, I whittled it out of wood. That's nice. That's great. Bye, everyone. Chat, I'm sorry, but Jack somehow broke out of his hole. Yeah, we've lost democracy, you're right, Chad. I'm sorry about that. Ch Jack just whittled his way out of the hole, and there's nothing much I can, I'm gonna go see if I can find a place to throw this away, hold on. What has been your all-time favorite outfit when performing with the band? That's a good question. I have a wedding dress that I love very much, and uh, especially because a lot of my more recent music is um, a lot, of, there's a lot of heartbreak songs. I think performing those songs in a wedding dress is very meaningful. I don't know, I look hot in the dress too. Um, I would love to be doing, I, w I think that I will set up my, I have a home studio, home recording studio, and I'm gonna have to get a few extra webcams and things, but I wanna set it up so that I can do live performances with the band on here. Uh, my favorite genre of music, one of my favorite musicians was a guy called Simon Jeffs, and he was part of a band called Penguin Cafe Orchestra. He said genres and all these labels and things that we attach to music is just a matter of convenience. And in my mind, music is very binary. It's either got it or it hasn't. And that, I think, is the most uh, meaningful way of looking at music and music genres that I've ever experienced. And I really appreciate that from him. Ooh, Ghibli film picks. Um... I mean, Spirited Away is, is, I think, one of my favorite films ever made in, in any genre, so that's a pretty easy choice. I think that's a fucking beautiful movie. Love Mononoke, love Totoro and the soundtrack of Totoro. I loved And the Wind Rises. As the Wind Rises? The Wind Also Rises? What was it called? I thought that was fucking beautiful. Best TV show of all time is Degrassi, Redhead Friend. I mean, you know, Arrested Development, sure, but... Degrassi, you said you like painting, do you like visiting museums, art galleries, do you have a favorite painting and or movement? Love going to museums, of course. I'll just say that my uh, favorite painter is Magritte. At least my favorite paintings are paintings by Magritte. I also love Dolly, but Magritte's painting called The Human Condition is my favorite painting uh, by far. Um, what's my favorite song right now? I've been really enjoying a record. There's an artist called Anna Domino. She has a song. This is an old record. It's like in the 80s. She has a song called The Land of My Dreams that I've been listening to on repeat that I think is very beautiful. Someone was asking about what's my um, least favorite question that I hear a lot. And uh, I don't know. I, I, think, uh, I, I think one thing that I'm, I'm, I've been kind of annoyed with... Uh, Hearing a lot of is just uh, questions about my sexuality, uh, which I just don't think is relevant to acting. Um, I think it's something that a lot of actors have been asked. I think that, the, well, it's interesting because I think people ask that question because they want to, they want to connect the person to the character. That is something that is personal and it is internal and it is part of your character experience in your own life. And it's just not relevant to uh, performing a character. I know I remember like someone asking Tom Hardy at some thing, and he's like, well, are you asking me about my sexuality? And they were like, yeah. And he's like, fucking why? <laughs> like, what are you? And so, yeah, that I think um, is a frustrating thing. I'm fine with, with, with talking about it, though. But, you know, I can clarify some stuff. I, you know, I, I wrote this uh, thing in response years ago. It somehow came out of something about me it performing in dresses and it, it was at a time where, I don't know, the media was just like really wanted to run a story about me being trans and I'm not. And so I felt like I had to clarify because I thought it was really important to not, you know, be claiming that because I haven't been oppressed by that being a part of my life. My feelings about this have changed a lot too since then, and I've, my perspective on my own identity has changed a lot since then. The more and more that you understand that gender is a performance and that it's this arbitrary thing that we've created, the more and more that you become aware of that, of gender as performance, like the more and more that you, I think, need to question it and question what 
you were assigned and how comfortable you are with what you were assigned. I don't feel the need to claim something in my identity because I have the privilege of, of being comfortable with the gender that I am perceived at as and was assigned, or, you know, like I was assigned male at birth and I'm comfortable with performing male. But I think that I'm only truly comfortable in performing male because I also perform female sometimes. That is something that I do and have done with my band for a long time. And the person that I basically identified as the person who I am when I'm being creative, I, I named her Millie and, um, acknowledged her as a female character. I think that being able to do that character sometimes is what makes me more comfortable in doing this character the rest of the time. You can call that whatever you want to call that. I don't know. I don't care about the labels that are involved with, you know, gender fluidity or whatever. But like it doesn't matter to me and I acknowledge that the reason it doesn't matter to me is because I have the privilege of being comfortable in the thing I'm perceived as by society, you know, and so, you know, to me, words and labels and things are just metaphors of convenience. To define who you are is a really important way of claiming an identity when you're not care uh, comfortable with what you're assigned. So, like Passion said, everyone should try drag. I think that every, especially with men, I think that every if every man in the world was was had to do drag. Uh, and it was like a compulsory thing just to play female for a second, just to play in that game, I think that there would be a lot more empathy and a lot less misogyny coming from men. But wait, yeah, okay, great point, benefic, benefic, that genre is actually the French word for gender. The genders are genres. That's actually a very, very, very good way to put it. I mean, look, if you're really going to get into it, I, I'm a big fan of Alan Watts. All words and all language are just metaphors that we use as a convenience to describe the indescribable universe. I'm cool with any pronouns. I, I really, again, like to me, words are just a matter of convenience. Absolutely fine with he, him. You can call me she, her. You can call me whatever you want. I really don't. And I know that that's because of the privilege, again, I'm that, that I am comfortable with performing the thing that I'm most perceived as. Especially when, I mean, when I am, when I'm portraying Millie and I'm on stage, you can, I mean, she, she is definitely her, so that's, that's fine. Of course, respect and appreciate everyone who has made clear how they would like to be perceived and have chosen one or two or whatever, then that's great. Someone on the Discord asked if I like Sophie. Of course I like Sophie. Fucking love Sophie. R.I.P. Sophie. Fuck. I mean, Sophie's like a fucking hero of sound design. Never got a chance to see her live. I was very sad about that. It, it started as me talking about my least favorite question to be asked and <laughs> became, I guess, a pretty positive space to, to share about this kind of stuff. Oh, and, and then, yeah, the other, you know, the, in, t in talking about and one asking about my sexuality, a lot of people have been doing that surrounding this character in this game. Yeah, I mean, I'll just say, like, I've been attracted to people of all t genders. I've only dated women, and so I don't claim queerness because of that. My relationships have never been a subject of oppression for me, so I don't feel like I am allowed to really claim Queerness, which I think, I mean, a lot of what I think is important about pride is about a place for people who have sh have a shared oppression coming together to support each other. And because I, male presenting and have only dated women, then I don't feel like I've experienced that oppression. And so I haven't claimed it. But if you want to know who I like sexually, I don't think that that's something that it makes sense for me to share. I think Dylan is a queer character. I think he's confidently, you know, it's unclear if he is also attracted to other genders, but he's clearly, you know, out the gate, is clearly attracted to Ryan. You know, when it comes to that, if the question is, do I have to have the same identity as this person in order to portray him? Like, the, my answer is just like, did I, did I do a good enough job? If you think I didn't do a good enough job, I'm sorry. 
The she Sheeb says, do you still have the Zoolander 2 Premier jacket that looked with such a sleigh? So I'll tell you a little story about that. That jacket is something that I made. It was a Halloween show I was doing. I decided to create a character for the Halloween show, and that character's name was Mrs. Ponyman. And Mrs. Ponyman was a character that I made just for that one event, and that was I took, I, I bought a uh, blazer at a thrift store, and I stitched a bunch of sliced up my little pony dolls to the uh to the blazer and i wore a white mini skirt and i was called mrs pony man and then i still had that jacket and then when um came time when i was invited to the zoolander 2 premiere with my mom i uh said to her we well, you know we have to wear the most insane shit that we can find and call it fashion I had to clarify after the fact that I, I do not identify as a, as a brony, but I love and support bronies. I watched the brony doc and it really opened my mind about what the brony culture is about. And I really fell in love with the idea that it's this safe space for people all around the world to come together and celebrate like positivity and friendship. I had a question and I think this will be my last question. What is my greatest fear? I have a lot of fears. As far as the horror genres are concerned, I'm most afraid of home invasion. I think that that's really fucking scary. Funny games I found to be very frightening. The Strangers, that's really spookies. My other fears are cars. I'm afraid of cars. I hate cars and I'm afraid of them. Also afraid of drinking water through a straw. Plain water through a plastic straw, especially is very upsetting. Also, uh, I walked by a shop and it had a bunch of like model boats in it, like little wooden model boats. And I really didn't like that shop. Something about boat models frightens me. You know what kind of freaks me out is like really long straightened hair, you know, like, like taboo in uh, the black eyed peas. And it's no offense to Taboo, like when you put it in a ponytail, it's fine, I don't care, like, I'm not afraid of you. Alright, y'all, honestly, chat, it's probably time for me to go. Dog is barking. Love you all very much, thank you for being here. Ciao!